Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone, wherever you may be, anywhere across the world. Thanks so much for joining us yet again live here today for Serverless Office Hours, uh, streaming on the AWS Titch channel. Welcome if you're joining us from there. Also on the Serverless Land YouTube channel and via LinkedIn Live. Super duper happy to be joining you today. Uh, if you don't know me, I'm Julian Wood. I'm a developer advocate within the serverless team, and I'm super duper happy to have uh, one of our literal experts, general nice person, and uh, proper serverless guru, Luca Mezzaliera. Luca, welcome to Serverless Office Hours. Hi, and thanks for having me, Julian. Absolute pleasure. I mean, and Luca has actually transitioned into a new role as of yesterday. Uh, so congratulations on the... Uh, I don't know, slash promotion, slash move, slash whatever. And so now you're a principal serverless specialist, specialist solutions architect. And even me, and I natively speak English, tripped over that words. So there are a lot of S's in there. Yeah, tell us about your new role. And yeah, how did you come into AWS? And what are you doing in your new role? Yeah, sure. Um, so as you said, I, I joined yesterday, so I'm quite new on the role. I'm trying to understand uh, how to, let's say, uh, best uh, perform in that, this new role. Um, so as specialists, uh, I usually uh, help customers uh, with uh, uh, their challenges on serverless in this case. Uh, I have uh, quite a, uh, a large experience on uh, building distributed systems for backend and frontend. Uh, before joining AWS, I was a VP of architecture for a company called The Zone, that is a live streaming uh, uh, platform, OTT platform. Uh, and uh, let's say we started with a small call with a small team and we as they grew up, uh, and this expertise on serverless basically was gained uh, during, uh, uh, let's say, that kind of distributed systems. Uh, before being a principal serverless specialist, uh, I was a principal on media entertainment. Uh, that is what I worked in the last seven years. Uh, and there I had the, the opportunity to work with uh, major broadcasters uh, um, and uh, publishing uh, companies around the UK and Ireland. Uh, that was uh, quite uh, a lot of fun, but then I decided to go back to my passion on serverless and uh, uh, try to pursue this uh, uh, new role and trying to help with my expertise uh, all the companies that are trying to get uh, serverless up and running properly or they are already there, but they want to, to step up. To do more. Excellent. And you're also a uh, proper book author um, all about front end. So tell us about your book. Yeah, so I wrote two books. Uh, the first one was in uh, 2018 on uh, uh, front-end reactive architectures. And the second one, uh, it, it was published last year in November uh, on, it's called Building Micro Frontends. It's the concept of uh, uh, using distributed architectures for front-end. Uh, I think uh, there was a big gap in the front-end architecture uh, where everyone knew, knew about single-page applications or set rendering, but as you scale as an organization, you, you have to scale not only the back end, but also the front end. Uh, so in the zone, we leveraged that uh, specific uh, um, approach. And it was uh, a very, very uh, powerful. And uh, obviously, we had some challenges and trade-offs, but that is normal in every architecture. Uh, so I decided to write a book and collect all the experience that I have uh, uh, in, in the zone, as well as helping our customers here in the US. Oh, fantastic. Well, I have put some uh, links to those books, uh, funny enough, on uh, Amazon.co.uk. May as well buy it from there. Um, so, yeah, have a look at those books. Um, yeah, really good resource to be able to uh, talk about a whole bunch of things. So we will be back with uh, Lucas shortly, but just quickly looking back over the past week. Um, last week, well, we're on a bit of a trend, actually, uh, for last week, this week, and next week, looking at different infrastructure as code tools. And last week was the turn of the really excellent serverless framework. And we had the superb Matthew Napoli, who was going through um, some new functionality with serverless compose, a uh, way to be able to build multiple uh, services and integrate them all, all together, which was really good. And actually, this week, we're talking about AWS SAM. And next week, we're actually going to be talking a bit about the, the CDK. So we have a bit of a theme going on um, over the past uh, a few weeks. Last week started off utterly chaotically because my uh, my computer froze in the, literally the first three seconds of talking to Matthew. But I have managed to edit that out. But you can see the video on uh, Serverless Land YouTube. So all the previous episodes for Serverless Office Hours are available there, including last week's without five minutes worth of uh, computer rebooting and poor Matthew not, sure, not knowing what's going on. But, you know, it'll look a little bit seamless now after the edit.
Uh, what's new in serverless? A few, you know, a few kind of things, some DynamoDB updates and step functions uh, over the past two, two or uh, or three weeks. Uh, but yeah, many sort of looking at the serverless blog posts over the past few weeks. Um, um, a new entry to our team, somebody who is uh, very experienced in all in all of EventBridge, David Boyne. Uh, he's written he's written our latest in case you missed it. So everything to do with serverless uh, in Q2 2022, and it's actually quite amazing to see how much uh, content is generated from. Uh, blogs and videos and podcasts and serverless office hours and all these kind of things. Um, so that's available for your leisure and your reading. And then also, excitingly, last week, a colleague on my team as well, Ben Smith, has introduced and released the Step Functions Workflows Collection. And this is a really phenomenal collection of workflow patterns for Step Functions and the ASL files that you can download from serverlessland.com. So we'll have a, a slide uh, uh, talking about this again at, at the end. But if you do know, we have the, the Serverless Patterns Collection, and that's patterns which also use SAM or CDK or uh, Serverless Framework or... Um, uh, HashiCorp's one, the other so, uh, other framework tool. Anyway, I'm going off my mind, but yeah, those you're able to download uh, directly. So if you're building serverless applications, really e easy way to integrate things. And this has now been ex uh, extended to step functions. So if you um, want some step functions patterns, they are available over there. Also, Emily Shea has done a really good blog post on uh, Amazon EventBridge writing to private endpoints in a, uh, in a VPC. And yes, a whole bunch of other blog posts that are continually coming out. Uh, it's AWS summit season, which is still going. The sort of European summits have now uh, finished. I was in Milan, which is uh, near, I know, uh, near and dear to uh, Lucas Hart being uh, originally Italian. So it was absolutely amazing being in, uh, in Milan uh, for two reasons, being at the AWS summit. And then also we got to meet a whole lot of the European AWS heroes who give us uh, unvarnished, untarnished and amazing feedback on um, everything we're doing at AWS. So appreciate, uh, appreciate their time. And of course, the food was Oh, just incredible. Simple Italian food made with love and passion, and it was amazing. So uh, that was fantastic. So yeah, those are the summits that are coming up if you are uh, out and about and wanting to um, attend. But uh, this week uh, is all about AWS SAM, and we uh, SAM Accelerate went GA last week, and so we've got Luca to tell us all about it. Luca, over to you. Thank you. Let me know when uh, you can see my screen. Uh, we can see your screen. Fantastic. Um, so um, I would like to share with you a bunch of uh, uh, new things that are happening in the uh, SAM world or serverless application model. So as you can see here, you can see the, the front page of our website on uh, the serverless application model that is uh, another way to build your serverless workloads. Um, one thing that I really like about the serverless application model or, or SAM is the, the simplicity and uh, uh, how it works behind the scene. From uh, I remember when I tried several years ago, uh, compared to other tools, uh, it might be limited, but now uh, they make really huge step forward. I think is um, uh, getting uh, really um, prime time for, for many reasons, and you will see few of them. Uh, today. So one thing that I would like to highlight about SAM is that it's composed by two main parts. You have a CLI that is the one that we are, we are going to, to deal with vast majority of the time today. And then you have also the uh, uh, transform part or the templating part. So when you have a template that is some syntactic sugar on top of CloudFormation, uh, you will uh, be able with a little code or little configuration uh, to um, export and create your CloudFormation um, um, template and uh, deploy uh, in your AWS account. And that's basically what we're going today. Uh, we're going to see today. Um, let me start with uh, uh, one important thing. So last week, uh, so six days ago, as you can see from here, there was the release of uh, a SAM 1.53. I, I, I highly recommend to keep up with the releases because when there are new uh, targets, so recently, for instance, we announced uh, Node.js uh, 16 and, and a few others. You will see them in, in a demo in a moment. Uh, they are available and every release, basically, if there is something new, we are going to, to update that list of potential uh, template that you can use for starting your project. Therefore, uh, keep up with the latest version. But more importantly, six uh, days ago, we released Sam Accelerate. And Sam Accelerate is a way for, have, uh, uh, for having a, a great uh, fast feedback loop uh, on uh, building your serverless application. There are a few features. So uh, you can uh, have like uh, a very fast track for deploying your Lambda code in, into your AWS account, for changing your infrastructure and deploying your uh, AWS account, as well as uh, retrieve traces, logs, uh, and so on and so forth. 
and more importantly, they also uh, integrated uh, the um, uh, Nasty stack uh, for a SAM Accelerate. And you will see, uh, I created an example literally yesterday for, for presenting this thing. It would be basic, but my focus today would be um, mainly to, uh, to focus on how to use SAM more than the code that is running inside the Lambda, stuff like that. So well, our focus will be there. Um, Okay, so let's jump on uh, on on few interesting things. So let's start with uh, Sam. So uh, I think the the um, the font size should be big enough. Uh, and let's start with something uh, very uh, basic but uh, important. So usually when we work with Sam, we want to create a new um, a new uh, serverless uh, project. So let's start with uh, with uh, a classic command. So I have installed Sam. You can install Sam uh, using uh, uh, brew install. Oh, sorry, install uh, AWS Sam CLI, and then you can you can install it. Uh, but in our case, uh, what we want uh, is already installed. We already have in the latest version. So as you can see here, we have one point fifty three latest version of Sam. Uh, and now what we want to create is a new project. Okay. So usually what you do with Sam is start with init. Init uh, is the first command that you do for generating a new uh, application. And in this case, uh, you are uh, we are using the interactive mode. So the interactive mode allows us to answer a few questions and get what we want. So in our first example, we are going to create a, a quick start template that is created by us. Uh, it would be a Hello World example. Uh, do we want do we want to use the popular runtime? I'm sorry for uh, Python developers. I'm not great with with Python. I worked with that several years ago, but I'm a JavaScript guy. So the four no. And as you can see here, we have all the latest runtimes. And uh, if you do you know, for instance, that Node uh, 16 is available now, you can uh, use it. Python 3.9, Rust, and so on and so forth. The same for Java. We have uh, Graal that is um, another new. Um, runtime that we support. So uh, that's why I'm saying keep up with uh, uh, the latest and greatest uh, uh, version of SAM. So in our case, we want to use Node. So we can decide which type of package we want to have. We want to have zip or image for our Lambda function. So in our case, is we are fine with, with zip. Uh, we don't need an image. And then here, because we are selecting JavaScript, Node.js, we can decide to use JavaScript, uh, vanilla JavaScript, uh, or ES6, or TypeScript. In our case, we are going to use uh, TypeScript. Another nice uh, add-on uh, is if we want to use X-Ray, uh, and that wasn't uh, available till a couple of versions ago of, of the SAM CLI. So now the, the, you can add, uh, you can activate uh, X-Ray, that is our distributed tracing service, for um, uh, tracking how your uh, serverless workload works. So in this case, yes, we want to use that. And then we go with the project name. So uh, we have serverless uh, office hours. So uh, SOH, hello world. Quite simple. Now we are cloning directly to uh, a GitHub repository, as you can see here. So this one is available. You can go in this, uh, in, let's say, um, uh, GitHub repository and check what we have done there. So there you have update all the templates, uh, and uh, uh, it's a good way to go. So in this case, what we have here uh, is uh, uh, now SOH, that is the new folder. So we have created a, a new application that um, is a, a simple one that is composed by a readme file. They Events that are uh, mock events that you can use for testing locally your Lambda. Uh, you have uh, uh, the Hello World folder that contains your Lambda code, and you have the template YAML that is the important part here. So let's try to see what we have uh, in uh, our editor. Uh, not this one, maybe I already have here. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Here we are. So when we go here, as you can see, let me start from the template first, and then we go to the code. OK, so this is the template that is created, uh, that was available inside uh, our um, uh, default template that was created by uh, AWS. And here, uh, you have a couple of important things. So those two things, those two lines, where, where we associated the uh, template format version and the transform uh, are mandatory. So those are not optional, and you need to have in every uh, template. Then you have uh, an optional field that is description. This is displayed inside CloudFormation uh, if you are um, if you are filling this this field. 
And then you have a, a bunch of other um, fields. So Globus is not mandatory, but is highly recommended. So with Globus, we are wrapping up all our, uh, let's say, configuration that are across multiple resources. Resources means a Lambda function, an API gateway, and so on and so forth. So for instance, if we want to have a timeout of uh, three seconds on our or all our Lambdas, you just change this value here, and off you go, you have it. If you want to activate X-Ray for all our Lambdas, you can do that as well. You just uh, need to do um, a tracing active, and you add on Globus. These Globus will be spread across all the uh, Lambda functions, in this case, that you are creating on the resources. As you can see also for API, uh, that is uh, our API gateway that uh, we are going to create for this example. We have tracing enabled out of the box because we selected X-Ray in uh, the previous interactive mode of our terminal. Here, uh, what you have is uh, um, our uh, definition of function. So we have our Lambda function uh, that is the specifying, uh, that is obviously type function, but more interesting pro properties. So you know where to find the handler, you know which is the runtime, and you know which is the architecture. So for instance, you, uh, at the moment, we are we supporting two types of architectures, uh, ARM uh, and uh, x86. Uh, and you can just change it here. Potentially, if you want to, if you want to uh, have all the Lambda function creating this project uh, with uh, x86 or, or ARM, uh, you can just take that and move to global, and the, everything will be uh, available there. You can even override for certain uh, for certain Lambda function that, that specific uh, uh, a specific property. It's completely up to you how you want to handle. And then you have obviously uh, an event. So an event is, in this case, this Lambda will be triggered by an hello world event that is uh, from an API gateway with a path hello, and is a method get. Last but not least, optional again, you have an output uh, where you have uh, a bunch of uh, information, including, in this case, by default, uh, the um, function, that the, the ARN of the function, which is the final URL, public URL of uh, uh, the API gateway that was deployed, and then the IIM role that was created because obviously we need to have an IAM role for allowing an API gateway to call a Lambda function. That is uh, what we have out of the box on that. As you can see here, it sounds for me, if you're familiar with CloudFormation, maybe you uh, you work with JSON, but in this case it's YAML, um, it's, uh, it's not too different. The only thing is we are providing with Sam a really tiny configuration that will allow you to quickly spin up your serverless workload. The other interesting part is, uh, um, uh, it, for instance, when you go with IIM roles, if you want to use specific IIM roles, like a function that, that has access only to read uh, a DynamoDB table and not to write, this is provided out of the box from, from Sam that creates a bunch of default IIM roles that you can just apply and you don't have to configure what is uh, available inside that IIM role. So um, overall, it's, it's pretty powerful. And this, it can be also integrated with the CloudFormation um, configurations, potentially. We will see later on also uh, a bunch of examples. OK, so we have seen how a template works. We have created our uh, first project. Let's try to build it. So for building, we go back to our CLI. As you can see here, uh, let me do this. OK, so we start again. We start to do with the second command that we know that is send build. And Sam Field basically is uh, building our pro project. Despite this, in this case, is Node uh, or Python, whatever. Sam knows how to handle that. Uh, and is creating a bunch of uh, uh, artifacts, as you can see, saying build succeed and the, where you can find the artifacts. Those artifacts, every time you change some code, you need to, uh, to recreate the build and then uh, deploy if you want. And now we have a bunch of uh, options. One thing that I wanted to, to show you is also that you can validate uh, so, uh, a template. So for instance, let's take the example I was making before. So we move the architectures, uh, and I want to have as a global. So every function that I'm creating inside uh, my, um, uh, my, my project uh, will contain, uh, will be x86. Uh, so all the, the Lambda functions. So in this case, we can use validate if you want to, to check that. I created uh, um, a bunch of profile in my AWS CLI that is another, uh, let's say, CLI tool that I highly recommend to have also because Sam leveraged uh, it for, for the profiles part. So uh, I created a profile called Playground. So I, now I'm validating against the um, IAM roles that I created there to just double check that I'm able to, to uh, work with this um, template properly. 
So all good, green, so it's valid and no problem at all in this case. Uh, and that's great. And now uh, I'm validating that. I want to maybe, um, uh, let's say, deploy that and see how deploy normally would work. So in this case, we have another guided um, option. So we can do SAM deploy guided. Obviously, like you have guided, you can also uh, discard that. So for instance, you integrate uh, uh, SAM inside a, a container in your CI, you can do everything without any interactive part. So you just literally append all the uh, information that are requested in the directive mode uh, as flags inside your uh, uh, SAM command, and, and you will be able to add that without any problem. So in this case is uh, service office hours, hello world. That's the name of the stack name that we want to create. Uh, I want to deploy in AWS West uh, one. EU, EU West one. Oh, sorry. Oh, <laughs> my bad. Uh, let me start again. So, also we're live as well. So send us all your questions via chat, um, via chat, and we'd be happy to answer them. Uh, you know, whether it's about Sam or hopefully it's, uh, serverless questions in general. Um, so yeah, please send us your questions or even tell us where you're from. We'd love to know where everybody's um, watching from. Um, yeah, so uh, US uh, uh, West uh, East one, I, know, I never remember that East one is, um, and uh, okay, and uh, and then we want to confirm the change before deploying. No, we don't care about that, allows him uh, uh, Sam CLI uh, to create the IAM role, yes. Uh, we want to disable rollback. No, we are like we like that. We want to authorize. Yes, definitely want to authorize and, and save the configuration. And the configuration will be saved for Sam config toml. That is the file was cre this created uh, there. And then you have like uh, Sam configuration environment that is default, but you can add different configuration. For and actually, that uh, that authorization for the API is a recent issue. I can't remember when that came to Sam. But that's also a nice little cool. Mm -hmm. Extra little check of, of like, really, do you want to, are you sure you want to deploy an API without any authorization? Obviously, this is in a demo, but in a production application, uh, you may not want an API just open on the internet with no authorization. So, you know, Sam's doing a nice little, uh, nice little check. So, yeah, so I know Lucas, uh, Lucas just um, troubleshooting that kind of thing. Sorry. I said, uh, th Benjamins, thank you for joining us from Salt Lake City. We have Superfo from Hendon, Virginia. We've got uh, Vijay Sayu from Detroit. Uh, we have Gilbert Young from Belize. Oh, Belize, that'd be lovely to go on the beach. And then completely closer to Europe. Um, hello from Sweden. So thank you everybody for joining. Sorry, I forgot the, the profile part. Yeah, uh, because, yes. uh, as usual, the first time that you do this, you need to also do other profiles so they know what, what are your credentials and everything. That is something that usually uh, I forget about uh, the first time that I do on live um, demo. Uh, confirm changes, yeah, ROM creation, yes, disable rollback, yes, 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 yes. And now it should work. Cool. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so now what is happening is this is building our project uh, and uh, and now it's deploying uh, inside my AWS account. So at the end of that, what we should have is an endpoint, public endpoint, we can hit and see if everything works. Now, I think just mentally see sort of how long this takes because, you know, it does take time. You're building resources in the back end. There's a, well, there's a Lambda function, an IAM role, a Lambda permission, which is IAM role, and an API gateway stage and an API, well, an API with an API associated API stage. And obviously, this is CloudFormation. You know, it's doing lots of API calls in the back end to create this. And, uh, you know, as, as would be normal, take some time. Yeah, provision infrastructure, let's say, is not always... Uh, as fast as we expect, but no. But this is the uh, cloud. If you were provisioning EC2 instances yes. and installing uh, uh, Nginx for an API or something like that, that would take a little bit longer. Yeah, absolutely. But we have also to say we don't need to do every time, right? So we can do we can do better than that. So now we have an API. So if I try to ping it, I have a message "Hello World" that is basically what we have inside our uh, up JSON, uh, sorry, up JavaScript file that is here. Okay. So all great. Uh, we have created our uh, first uh, um, application, but the feedback loop now it would uh, is not probably the fastest one I would say. So now, if I want to change, for instance, this hello world with something else, uh, I will need to go through the same steps. So I need to do some build, some deploy, and then I can I can test it again. 
can we do something better? Absolutely. And that's why we have Sam uh, Accelerate. So Sam Accelerate works in this way. So now what we are going to do, we have a new common, the Sam Sync, and uh, we can synchronize what we have locally inside our um, AWS account. So in this case, uh, what we do is not only we want to uh, synchronize, but we want to do more. We want to have a demo uh, inside our machine that is checking when there is any change and then behave on atomically deploy our Lambda function or changing the infrastructure code. So in this case, uh, we uh, create, uh, we do some sync, uh, is uh, watch, then we do the stack name. Those are the parameters that we need. Uh, so the stack name is in the world. And then what we need is uh, uh, our profile that I don't forget anymore, hopefully. So when we have done that, now is starting once again with uh, um, with uh, all the um, uh, with the build, but this time uh, we succeed. Now it's deploying. This time we are not going to need uh, anything else, uh, but uh, we can start to work on our project and synchronize the code and the infrastructure. Uh, directly on the cloud without touching our CLI. And that's great because that means uh, we can uh, uh, focus on what we're uh, doing. We can have a very fast feedback loop on uh, uh, if the things are, are working or not, or whatever. And I think that I really like um, is that um, I can I can really focus on what it matters, that is basically changing my code, changing the logic, and most majority of the time on serverless projects, when you have defined your infrastructure, yeah, maybe at the beginning you have a few iteration for changing small things and configuration here and there. But then when you have uh, when you have your API app running, vast majority of the time you are changing the business logic of your uh, code more than uh, the, the infrastructure. And then you change the infrastructure when there are specific new features or, or new requirements, right? So now it's completed. As you can see, uh, I cannot type so the, uh, again on my CLI. Um, so if I want to, for instance, call this endpoint here and see if everything works. So we go to a new terminal uh, and we type the new uh, URL. So this is a uh, hello world. Okay, so now we go back to our code uh, and uh, uh, we change in hello world serverless office hours. When we save, now what's happening here, you see, is building automatically my Lambda, only my Lambda and deploy atomically my Lambda. So now I finish syncing the Lambda function and the word function in my AWS account. And uh, if I go back here and I call again the same message, you see that immediately I have the new code up and running in my account. And the only thing that I did is just saving a change inside my file. So that is super quick. So you know, people worrying about the inner loop of uh, before each time I'm having to save my Lambda function, I'm having to do a build, a deploy it takes time. Uh, need to go and get a coffee. Need to go and do something and come back. Yeah, no longer. Sorry, you're going to be missing your coffee, but you know, <laughs> you can schedule that in another time. Absolutely, I fully agree. Obviously, uh, the 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 thing is 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 intelligence. So accelerate doesn't only uh, pick up when you change code. It it, it change is also picking up when we change, uh, for instance, some uh, some part of our uh, infrastructure. So, for instance, uh, if we want to have uh, um, ARM in this case. Uh, instead of uh, uh, x86, we can just change the architecture, we save it, and then here is running everything again, so building the project and deploying uh, my infrastructure because I changed the template YAML file, uh, and therefore I uh, I need to do, to do so. That's pretty cool. So now it's deploying, build succeeded, and now it's going to deploy everything, and in a few seconds we will have our uh, new Lambda running on ARM64 instead of uh, uh, x86. That is great. Also because Graviton, if you didn't try, it provides uh, great performances and also cheaper cost. So meanwhile is doing this. Uh, let's explore something else. Uh, obviously, when we are um, when we are writing code for our serverless uh, project, uh, it's not always possible uh, to um, uh, to just call an API and that's it. We want to see logs. We want to understand what's going on and stuff like that. So Sam Accelerate provides you also another functionality, the PSM logs. 
So if we go with the stack name that was um, serverless office hours, hello world, and then profile uh, playground, uh, and we want to add tail. Uh, so what is happening right now is that with Sam logs, you are going to uh, fetch directly your uh, account um, the uh, CloudWatch logs that are available, and you will have that inside your uh, um, command line. So as you can see, because I activated X-Ray, I don't retrieve only uh, my uh, logs, but they also retrieve uh, the X-ray trace ID and the segment ID. So if you have, if you structure your code in a way that you want to track multiple performance or specific part uh, of, of uh, some code, like you want to understand how fast is uh, uh, querying a database or writing in a database or specific algorithm and stuff like that, you can create multiple sub segments uh, that will allow you to, to show you inside this, this thing. And you can do for logs, but also for, for traces. So if you want to isolate just the traces from X-Ray, you will be able to. And, and, and this is, I think, is great because now, so if we try again to do our uh, curl, let me take again the URL, and we try to create law, uh, a bunch of um, codes. Uh, now, if we go back to this where, tab where we have all the, the logs, in a few seconds, we should start to receive the long tail, here we are, of all the other logs. The cool thing is through flags on this command, you don't need to have all, everything real time. You can uh, pull only specific logs on uh, a period of time. So if you say, for instance, I know that something happened between, uh, I don't know, 10 a.m. and 10.30 or 10, 10 a.m. Uh, you can go there and specify the time in, in the flags of, of send logs and retrieve just that amount of information that you need. So you, it's really helping you to, to try to find uh, for uh, you as a developer to understand what's going on and, and so on and so forth. So I think this is uh, a pretty cool uh, option that, that you have. Look at the, the logging, is that uh, just for the SAM functions or, sorry, the Lambda functions, or does it also include any of the API gateway logging? So this one is for uh, Lambda, um, for because we are currently testing uh, that part. Uh, but I believe uh, you will be able to have uh, uh, also an API gateway. Great. The other interesting part uh, is that it's not only uh, available for specific function. You can have also SAM uh, accelerate for uh, nested um, application, nested stack. So nasty stack is when you have, for instance, imagine a monorepo with multiple applications, and uh, you want to um, uh, to use that for um, uh, concatenate multiple projects, and maybe even uh, you need a sequential deployment of them. So in this case, let's go outside here and go nested. Uh, and nested is an example that I created uh, literally yesterday. So let's go here. Uh, nested, nested, nested. Yeah. Um, so nested basically has a bunch of templates for making it extremely simple. What I've done is creating a, a YAML template for um, a parameter store and just create uh, a nested up greetings variable. And I know I'm not, I don't have a great fantasy on, on these kind of things, but uh, just to pass a value that is alone. Uh, and then I created a settings API that is instead uh, a, a Lambda function with uh, uh, the, uh, an API gateway that is available. And the good thing here uh, is that uh, you can uh, inject specific variable using uh, a parameter store, but at uh, a provisioning time. So basically what you can see here is basically saying to CloudFormation, uh, go to parameter store, fetch the nasty dub slash greetings version three, because I already tried a couple of times, uh, and you will and you will have as environment variable uh, the uh, value that is storing in parameter store inside greeting. That means it's not available only for, for environment variables. If you have other configuration you want to, um, uh, to, to, to try, uh, you can do that as well. 
Uh, and, and the cool thing is uh, uh, it, that it does everything for you, so you don't have to create uh, uh, some code inside the Lambda function for fetching uh, real-time this information. Obviously, there are this, this is solving a, a, some, a bunch of, of use cases, not solving all the use cases, but definitely is solving uh, uh, some of them. Uh, and it's great because uh, obviously it will simplify your, your work and, and uh, uh, it's a great way to, to handle these kind of things. You can do also with uh, Secrets Manager. I don't recommend to do that uh, for, for Secrets because otherwise from the dashboard, from the console, you will be able uh, to see uh, what is the secret in clear. But uh, it's another thing that potentially you can do. Yeah, I love the the, the integration with um, Parameter Store is, is amazing. And at build time, I sort of think of it as a serverless service discovery um, where you, and especially if you're thinking about um, infrastructure as code, when you're rolling out multiple dev environments or multiple CDI, CD pipelines, you just want to be able to grab those central parameters. And that could be a database name. It could be a, a you know, a, an API key or anything. And you just store it in Parameter Store. And at build time, you can just pull them down. And yeah, it makes it so much simpler than having all these hard coded uh, funky things that you need to remember. Totally. And uh, because I have two independent uh, applications, so the uh, parameter store one mm -hmm. and the uh, settings API, I created a template that instead is concatenating that. And here, what I want is that first I create the um, value inside the uh, parameter store. And then uh, I create my uh, infrastructure, uh, provision my infrastructure uh, on uh, uh, the API gateway plus Lambda. And also I use depends on because I want to wait that uh, this first part is available. Otherwise, I won't have my environment variable. So I won't be able to act uh, in, inside my uh, other workload. Imagine that in this case is not a great thing, but maybe it's, a, I don't know, a database endpoint or something more meaningful than, than just a great thing. So as you can understand, you, you, you might want sometimes to have these, uh, these things in, in sequence more than in parallel. That's great. Uh, so uh, I already provisioned this stuff, but what we want to do is leveraging um, some uh, accelerate uh, once again. So same sync uh, in, in this part. So we do stack name. I need to remember well is nasty. Uh, and uh, profile playground. Um, and then we want watch as a flag. So we can change things simultaneously. Let me see. Yeah, go for it. Right, so now it's build succeeded. Checking what I have. In my nested up. Uh, so it's checking if everything is there, up and running. And when it's ready, we can start to play with that. And I think while, while it's deploying, it's some other interesting thing I like telling people about. Um, people often get, I suppose, conflate microservices with SAM templates and think, uh, you know, a SAM or CDK or serverless framework template needs to equate to a microservice because that's one thing you deploy at the same time. But actually, I think uh, many microservices are composed about many different pieces of infrastructure. And you've got things that are more static and things that are more dynamic. And things that are static could be an RDS database, could be a VPC, uh, could be a DynamoDB table, for example. And those kind of things, when you're iterating and developing on your uh, serverless application, aren't things that are going to change particularly often. And I think it's a really good idea to separate those out into separate CloudFormation stacks because two reasons. When you then update the stack, it's not having, when you update just some Lambda function code, it's not going to have to check, is the VPC there? Is the DynamoDB table there? Is the RDS uh, table there? All that stuff, which you know isn't going to change, so it's going to be quicker. And secondly, there's just a little bit of safety that somebody uh, isn't going to by mistake, uh, you know, fat finger and change the name of a DynamoDB table. And what's that going to do? It's, it's not going to rename a DynamoDB table. It's going to delete one and recreate one. And then, uh, you know, hopefully that, that isn't in a production environment. But even in a dev environment, you're going to lose some infrastructure and it's going to be annoying. So this nested stack support, um, which Luke is showing, can be really useful that you can uh, you can split your infrastructure's code templates into multiple sub stacks and separate that sort of more stateless part. And then when you're doing your Lambda functions with, uh, with Sam Accelerate, that's even quicker to be able to um, iterate. 
totally. I would add on, on, on this also because maybe you have uh, similar use cases in multiple microservices. Uh, it doesn't mean that uh, uh, you don't you cannot uh, share certain configuration yeah. or maybe these configuration are provided by the platform team for standardized certain entry point or cer certain practices that you want to have uh, inside your distributed system. So I believe um, this approach will help you to, to achieve certain uh, certain of those uh, cover certain of those use cases that are uh, quite great in my opinion. Yeah. Okay, so Everything is sync, so we still you we are still using uh, uh, accelerate. So let's see what we have here. So as you can see in uh, my um, uh, SSM uh, template, I have an, a, a low value for my greetings, and in my lambda, uh, let's go to the lambda. Uh, do up. Uh, so I, I retrieve basically the environment variable called greeting, and I append the uh, static uh, word word. So let's try this one. Uh, I saved this URL for trying it. Uh, go back here. So if you try to do this, we should have a low word. That is what we have right now. It should be big enough, I guess. Uh, so that is the first message that we have. Now, again, is an SS stack, so two different uh, applications. So now we go back to, uh, to our application. So the uh, Sam Accelerate is running behind the scene. What we want to do uh, is changing the greetings. Um, so from here, where we have hello, let's go with an Italian and quite common way to say hi, that is ciao. So we store it. And the other thing we need to change is the settings API, uh, because now when we deploy the new version of uh, uh, our value, they, they will bump up a version. So if we keep free, it will, you will see still uh, the old version. So it's versioning all the different uh let's say changes that you make and in this case would be four so we will have a new greetings and now we need to wait till uh, is updating everything so as you can see it's already started has already started so i'm doing a few of those things and i believe that is uh great because again nasty stack more complexity still you can do um you can leverage some accelerate and have a fast feedback loop you can do also with logs uh and the same thing like before and you can do per um, workload. So if you want to have just logs of SSM or just along those settings API, you can do that. Uh, that, that is fine. The um, other thing that we have seen when we have seen this up running, uh, finished, uh, we will be able to, um, uh, it will take a bit, we will be able to move to next topic uh, that I think uh, uh, it would be interesting as well. So now we, we have, uh, let's say, build everything, but sometimes you want to test something locally. Maybe you want to try a tiny bit, the a bit of logic that you want to make sure it's working, and instead of uh, deploying straight to the cloud, you want to do that uh, locally. Uh, okay, so succeeded. Let me see if uh, he has done. Yeah, there was another one. In fact, I was waiting for that. So because I made two changes, one for SSM, the other one for uh, um, uh, the settings API. Now is is redeploying everything to make to uh, because it picked up the second. Uh, change that I made, so it's going to basically create a similar queue of uh, making all the, applying all the changes. One, yeah, and that's not just doing a code change. This is also amending the uh, lambda function configuration, which is going to be, you know, that's going to take a little, little bit longer. Uh, but yeah. I mean, I mean, if you are just iterating, your environment variables are staying the same, for example, and you're just iterating a new lambda function code. Um, I mean, in this example, uh, the SAM build command is running because there are some dependencies within the SAM, uh, the SAM package. But sometimes you are running some, you know, quick and small Lambda functions that don't actually have dependencies. And so you don't, the SAM build process is literally instantaneous and you yes. can, uh, you know, hit save on your on your on your node or Python or uh, code. And literally by the time you've even switched back to the to the other watch folder, it's already updated. So it literally can be in you know sub-second updates to test your code. Yeah, totally. So this one is just because to iterate, I'm changing the infrastructure, and that's it. So if I'm going to change the code, uh, as you were suggesting, uh, inside uh, uh, my settings up this year, um, that will basically be instantaneous. So let's see where we are. We are almost there. Luca, just while this is going, one sort of comment, I suppose, which uh, 
this isn't really intended to be used for uh, production applications with SAM Sync. Um, the idea really is, is while you're testing and building and developing to make that really quick, you wouldn't be doing this for your production applications because behind the scenes, what a SAM Accelerate is doing, it's talking to the Lambda a APIs directly, not via CloudFormation and sort of doing a, it's not quick and dirty, but it's a sort of quick, uh, quick function configuration update. That's correct. So ideally, your your um, setup as a developer, you will have your own account, and you start to work on on that, and uh, you will be able to uh, do have a fast uh, iteration and loop, and uh, uh, or other way it could be with a small team. So you have like a, an agile team that has that is composed by three four developers. You can work together on that, and usually dev is the most unstable one as an environment. And then move, when you move towards uh, production, you tend to be very reliable and those kind of things, you are not going to do that. You shouldn't even have uh, the, the possibility to go straight to, to production with, with Sam. You should have like your CI set up properly. This is mainly for the developer experience and having a fast feedback loop when you're developing. Yeah, and the one other thing for uh, for this as well is this is the speed in terms of uh, saving your files and getting up to date, but oh, it's gone off the tip of my mind. There was another whole sort of whole of use cases, Sam. I'm going to have to think about it ahead. My my brain's obviously gone to sleep. But anyway, sorry to jump in. I had something I was going to say, and then promptly... no worries, no worries. <laughs> Very valuable. Um, so as you can see here, now we have Chow. But as uh, Julian was suggesting, so if I go back here, and they have also uh, an uh, other two exclamation mark. Uh, now this one should be synchronized. Oops, wrong one. This one better. This should be synchronized right away. So now it's already synchronized, and boom, you have the, you have the exclamation mark. Um, so as you can see, you can have like a really uh, a neat in, in a feedback loop. Again, vast majority of the time, you change the code more than the infrastructure logic. Maybe at the beginning, just when you are tweaking things here and there, you will uh, iterate on, on more often on the infrastructure. But for uh, OS for code, is absolutely great. I remembered what I was going to say. The other whole point of SAM Accelerate is actually being able to test properly in the cloud. Yes. So people land up doing a whole lot of mocking and testing and stubbing and all this complicated stuff locally. And sometimes that's going to be useful and sometimes it's still going to be needed. But using SAM Accelerate with uh, Lucas showing you how quickly it is just to change that te text message. But think of the power on the back end that you actually have everything, be it DynamoDB, SQS, SNS, EventBridge. Think of any kind of service or you know deployed in the cloud ready. And so you can test a uh, you can do the local quick uh, testing and then test against the cloud resources, which is also going to test your permissions and also going to test far more than having to, you know, do a whole bunch of work to mock to mock things locally. Okay, so uh, let's move to to another uh, use case. I would say that Sam can help you. So uh, we say we know that Lambda functions are usually triggered uh, by events, right? So uh, and sometimes you need to have these events, and you want to understand how it would look like, but you don't really know how AWS is handling the um, the request. Uh, for for Lambda because you don't know what inside the event payload uh, you will find there, but Sam can help you also there. So you can do uh, Sam uh, local uh, generate event uh, that uh, will allow you to generate a, an event. So let's see what we can do here. So when you call uh, Sam local generate event with help uh, with the flag help, you can see all the different triggers that are available uh, uh, for, for Lambda or better, the events that you, we can generate from that. So for instance, uh, if we want to generate um, a, blah, 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 what is it? Uh, a CloudFront, uh, sorry, CloudFront, uh, a API Gateway one. So we do API Gateway, and I never remember what's next. So we check. That is another important thing. So when you select the service, usually you have a bunch of other commands or uh, flags that you can change. So in this case, what I care about is just an AWS. Let's see. And this should generate this. So when, when you use local event, you can generate, uh, you could have like the payload of the event available uh, inside your CLI. But what you could do with the magic, uh, you can store inside the events folder, uh, events folder, and we call like uh, my ABT.json. And uh, now we have inside our 
Okay, created. So now we have here inside, uh, let me close a couple of things. So we have the green of environment. So uh, now this one, and then we'll Sam, events, and now we have my EDT. So as you can see here, we have like how the event would look like if an API gateway is calling our Lambda. And obviously you can tweak uh, what you feel that uh, you should receive from API Gateway, and then you can test locally. How would you do that? So here you have your uh, event uh, JSON shirt. Certain field, you can pass them, like for instance, the path or the body can be passed as flag inside your uh, SAM command. Uh, but in general, you can also just create that and then tweak it uh, um, as your own way, in your own way so inside your editor. Um, so if you want to test it, so we go here and uh, uh, we just say, uh, perfect. So uh, now I want to do set local, oh, some build first. Yeah, while we're just going through that, I just got some questions that are coming. Uh, thank you, uh, Burn My Fingers from Twitch. Uh, yeah, earlier we were talking about the logs when it got on, did you go over app metrics? And, uh, you know, you did say a huge downside of using Lambda in your experience was trying to integrate with something like CloudWatch metrics. Uh, so, yeah, we didn't cover because me metrics. The gathering of metrics isn't quite part of the SAM thing because no. that's sort of getting the logs of your Lambda function. However, if you are using Lambda and you're wanting to do metrics, two parts to the to the answer. One is that Lambda provides a whole bunch of metrics out of the box. So there are a whole bunch of things about numbers of invocations and duration and all those kind of, kind of things. Lambda Insights is another good sort of bit you can add onto your Lambda functions, which has got even things like CPU and memory usage and network usage. Um, and then the other part is uh, Lambda Power Tools, which is a really great set of libraries and utilities that you can add to your Lambda function, which makes you uh, generating metrics far, far easier, yeah. uses the embedded yeah. metrics format, um, is faster, is cheaper, and much easier. So if you are rightly finding it difficult to um, to use CloudWatch metrics, certainly have Lam uh, give Lambda Power Tools, and uh, that's available for a bunch of languages, not all of the languages, but uh, Node, Python, and Java, I think, at the moment. Yeah. OK, so we build the project. We have our application up and running, and uh, uh, we want to invoke. So usually, if you want to test very quickly your, your Lambda, you just do some local invoke. In this case, we have just one Lambda function available, uh, and, there, and therefore, it's just building up uh, your um, uh, container. So you need Docker for, for doing that, and uh, start the request, and then it returns a response. I already, uh, before these event, these uh, session, I, I already downloaded the uh, image for Node.js 14. Uh, that the first time it can take a few seconds. After that, you will be able to, to have uh, this experience that you can build that from here. And here you can see the response. Um, one thing that I would like to, to do now is, OK, maybe I want to, um, to debug locally my, my function. Uh, and uh, at the moment, with Sam, you can do that, definitely do that. So let's go to our application, pretty basic. So here I have uh, like my Lambda function with the null word Sam. I already created a breakpoint here. But also, as you can see, I created a bunch of environment variables. Therefore, in my template YAML, I should have, here we are, uh, my um, environment variable called db that has a fake uh, HTTP uh, endpoint, so HTTPS prod, uh, and wherever URL it is. Uh, and uh, I want to obviously debug this this part for debugging. When you install inside AWS uh, in inside Visual Studio Code, uh, AWS Toolkit, uh, you will be able to have this experience. So you go to your handler, and uh, on top of your handler, you have these two buttons: add debug configuration, edit debug configuration. Now I've already created a, a configuration. So when you click add debug configuration, you will add a new one if you don't have it. But in my case. Uh, is av already available. So in VS Code, you have this part available inside the .VS Code folder, and they create a launch launch JSON that contains multiple potentially configuration that you want to try or debug. In this case, you can uh, test directly directly invoke towards the Lambda, or you can use a, an API, a local API gateway for for doing so. And not only this, you can also tweak your request for uh, using specific uh, parameters like query string or a header uh, or anything else. So in our case, uh, we are doing um, 
direct invoke of, of your uh, Lambda function. And we have a payload uh, that in this case would be JSON and we will retrieve, uh, it could be also a path in this case, so or either a JSON, so an inline object that we describe, or it can be a path and we refer to an external JSON available in our operating system uh, or file system. And here I have the environment variables. Bear in mind that if you specify the environment variable here and you don't specify in the template YAML, it's not going to work. So you need to have double specifications. So one in, in your configuration, otherwise it won't be picked up. You can also specify other stuff like AWS credentials uh, and uh, uh, other, um, uh, other things. Uh, that you can find in documentation. But the cool thing is now we have a way for debugging our application locally. So if we go back here, we go in the debug, uh, in the debug uh, area. Uh, I started to, let me see if I can increase this. Uh, is here. Uh, so I started to, to add also event web that is on my payload and, and uh, the environment variable DB uh, as a watched variable. So we can see that. Uh, let me see if I have the right one. Yes, it's the one with the direct invoke. So now we are directly invoke this one. And if everything goes well, we should have um, the first uh, invocation output, some local invoke. So it's building uh, my application. Usually it's not that slow, I think, because I have too many things that I'm doing inside these uh, uh, live events. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're streaming your CPU goes a bit bad. While it is building, um, Sonus, yeah, you did say, when debugging locally using SAM local invoke, will a Lambda function be able to use Lambda layers if they are part of the SAM template? Absolutely, not just if they are um, part of the same template. Uh, well, when they are in part of the same template, but not just uh, all Lambda layers, and that includes Lambda extensions. And also, if that Lambda extension is talking to, I don't know, app config or some external uh, observability platform, that just works. So yeah, the Lambda layers uh, functionality is is really seamless and works really well uh, when you're doing SAM local inv invoke. A uh, quick one, Gilbert Young Jr., a uh, uh, Canary deployment with a SAM pipeline. A few episodes ago, we had a, a really good um, serverless CI CD, and we went through SAM pipelines with a Canary deployment. So have a look back at that previous uh, episode. That will sort of um, help you out. So Let's now, almost. <laughs> it's getting there. It's getting there. Yeah, our time's going, so I'll just... Um, uh, See, we did have, a, I think, a um, question again from Norman Kine. If we've built the stack using CDK, can we use SAM Accelerate? Uh, SAM does integrate with uh, CDK and can build CDK, but I don't believe that SAM Accelerate can use uh, CDK yet. No. Um, I think that's great. Okay, excellent. But uh, you can have, I don't remember how it's called in, in, uh, um, in CDK, but you have a similar, um, a similar um, thing that is basically uh, allowing you to have that yeah. same, uh, uh, the same, same behavior. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't remember the exact name. It has, it has a name. It's a hot, hot swap, maybe, something like that. Yeah, something like that. Um, uh, that allows you to do, to do something like, like this, like, like you have seen in, uh, in this example. Um, so in this case, okay, this one is an internal one, but when we go to our uh, implementation, so the next breaking point, here we are. So now you have, we have like event web that is populated. We have process amp that is depopulated with HTTP db.com. That was the one specified inside our launch JSON. So as you can see here, you can specify different scenarios that you want to try. You can use it, the external events that you generated uh, for, for testing your application. Uh, you can uh, really do, uh, let's say, local testing on specific things. Usually, uh, I recommend to do that when you are testing your logic, you're uh, doing a new version, a new feature, whatever it is, before you go to um, to your um, AWS account, maybe you can try a few things uh, and, uh, and that should uh, work very well. And the other thing is maybe when you are doing uh, when you're doing some debug and you want to make sure that everything uh, is working as expected, you, you can do locally. Now, uh, often when I present this, the, quest, uh, the following question is, can we do remote debugging? At the moment, with some you cannot, uh, and I don't know if there is any plan for, for doing so. 
Um, but I know some third parties uh, companies are looking into it uh, for creating a, a remote debugger for, for Lambda. Usually what I've seen so far is the, the idea is that you plug your IDE uh, against, a, um, um, against a proxy that is living inside the AWS account that is creating the um, a socket connection with your IDE and uh, the Lambda function for retrieving certain information. Uh, that's what I have seen in a few open source projects that are available out there. Uh, and uh, uh, therefore, out of the box, not possible, but there are other solutions that allows you to do so. And last but not least, on the local debugging, it's not available only for um, uh, VS Code, but also uh, for uh, the uh, JetBrains IDs. So if you're using JetBrains, also there, uh, you have a bunch of uh, other things that you need to, to install, but there is the uh, documentation inside our uh, guides that explain exactly how it works and uh, how to configure your ID uh, or editor in this case for, for JetBrains. Excellent, Luca, thanks so much. Uh... You've been through a huge amount of SAM in a, in a quick amount of time. Really appreciate your knowledge. Thanks so much for coming. Next week up, same time, same place. We're actually going to be looking more at CDK. And so we've got Gregor Hoppe, who's one of the world's absolute experts on uh, building server integration patterns. And he's turning his uh, clever eye onto serverless. And with Luis Morales, we're going to be looking at how to build some of these, uh, uh, some of these patterns with CDK and, and talking about a nice topic title called Infrastructure as Actual Code. So um, thanks so much for joining us. Luca, really appreciate your time um, you. and your and your knowledge. I'm sure we'll have you back on another time to talk about some more uh, kind of things. Serverless. Um, don't forget also if you want to anything about serverless, serverlessland.com. We've got serverless patterns. We've got the workflow connections, videos, blogs, everything about serverless on AWS. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, same time, same place. Uh, we'll see you next week. And yeah, enjoy the rest of your week. And Luca, thanks again so much for joining us. Have a nice